Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the trust that artists have with each other in the rehearsal hall. Sure. Um, I have a process by which I approach all the work. I usually give the same hour and a half, two hour speech in the afternoon on the first day of rehearsal. And it doesn't matter whether it's um, to the Shaw Festival company or the NTS kids, right? So, and a lot of that is about, it's, it's, there's some, a big psychological component into it where I work on uh, taking away the, the fears uh, empowering actors in the best way so that they know uh, that yeah they I'll, I'll say to them but listen if it's not working let me know I'll blow it up it doesn't matter and it and we, we will do that and have done that late 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 in the process so it's about building um, a relationship with them where uh, I treat people like they're kind of adults Right in in all, and I I if the if the cause if what we're talking about is graphic, then I'd be graphic, right? But it can all be done in a way where a person is not feeling transgressed upon or 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 or, or anything, um, and I jokingly say you know when I took over as artistic director I didn't know I was joining a monastery. Mm. But that's what it is, right? Because you cannot have those those kinds of of inappropriate behavior at any length. I spend a lot of time with young artists mm. who would do anything to get ahead, mm. and there is there is a pattern that I have. I mean, there's no drinks after work. There's no going out to the theater, you know, as my None of that. We meet for lunch or for tea. You come by the office. You meet everybody. We go to someplace public. You come back to the office. You, you know, there's, there's a whole ritual around that. And why is that important? It's not that it's just self-serving on my side. What it is, is since I get phone calls, particularly from uh, young women who turn around and say, Hey, this happened to me by this person. What do you think? Mm -hmm. So there's a whole network of information that's going. So for me to start to build that trust, even away from the rehearsal hall, is people to know that that conversation doesn't include me, that negative conversation. And so when people come to the rehearsal hall, there already is a, um, a, a, an understanding that a lot of stuff is off the table mm. and that we're cool. And that you can say whatever it is you need to say, and that's fine. Um, I had a, I, I, I directed a show out the East Coast, and uh, on opening night, one of the actors came up to me, and we we're talking, just chatting. I was flying out the next day, and she just said, "I want to thank you. This has been the best process since I've ever been out of school." She said, "It's so nice to be with a director who didn't hit on me." Cool. And this wasn't that long ago, and I'm like, "What?" This is still happening. I mean, look, I was, you know, you may not think it now with the gray hair, but there was a time I was a rather pretty boy. <laughs> oh, and, go on. Yeah, I know. Shucks. And, um, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I had, I had, I had a bunch of ugly stuff happen to me mm -hmm. and that's, that's what that was. But so everything that I learned that I didn't like be as being an actor in a rehearsal hall coming through mm -hmm. is what informed my process of how I want my rehearsal hall to be. Mm -hmm. So there are guys like Robin Phillips who could be brilliant and despicable at the same time, mm -hmm. but I decided I wasn't going to be despicable. Maybe I'd be brilliant. I don't know, but I wasn't going to be, I knew I could, I, I didn't know about the brilliant part, but <laughs> I knew I didn't have to be despicable. Mm -hmm. And so my, what I do is, is I come at it from a, a point of view of an actor. How do they feel supported? How do they feel challenged? How do they feel empowered by the part? There's no higher compliment than an actor can say to me than I really felt like I had the power in this part. I, I was, it was my part I was empowered by. And, and that sense to me that, that what I've done is not just directed a play, but I built a crew. 
And that to me is the big thing for me. If I can build a crew mm -hmm. around a project, then we're good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I directed these kids up at, at NTS and uh, they were down in Toronto last week and I took, <laughs> I took them all out for dinner, right? And I was amazed, right? We, we have this wonderful relationship because I actually treated them like they were adults. Mm. And uh, one day uh, uh, Sophie says to me, so um, what, what, when, how, when do you want us to be off book? And I said, I don't know. And she said, what? And I said, well, I don't care. I'm not the one going to be up on the deck. I kind of figure you're going to get off book when you need to get off book because you're the one that's going to be up there. And she kind of looked at me. I said, that's your job, girl. And she said, okay. And because they talk, within three days, every single actor was off book. But it's not me, you know, being some sort of grandfather to them. It's, it's like, I'm treating you with respect. You're an artist. It takes craft. It's work. Let's do it together. Does that answer it? Mm -hmm. Also, too, I think that uh, the era of uh, people being assholes and brilliant is over. I think that uh, bad behavior is no longer. I, w I would, I would like to think so, but um, hmm, I, <laughs> I think, I think that at the time that Andrew, you get to a certain, certain strength of character, inner character, when you the the time, the minute you say. I will not let that stand in a rehearsal hall. Mm -hmm. They don't do it around you. Right. Right. But that is not, I think, what necessarily happens when you get somebody who's ego-driven and thinks they can get away with it. 